This podcast is brought to you by the School of Advanced Study, University of London. Yeah, my name is Anna Stram Weilbrück and uh, I'm a curator at a small art museum in Copenhagen called the Hirschborn Collection. And um, last year I, uh, I was working on a small exhibition centered on two portraits we have in the collection. A very large, almost life-size, uh, from 1818, uh, showing a merchant and his wife. Um, I've brought the catalogue from the exhibition, so if anyone is interested, you feel free to, to take a copy. Um, in one of the two paintings, uh, the wife is a woman knitting, and uh, my curiosity was piqued when I found this motif recurring in many portraits of the time that is, rich women knitting. So I asked myself why these women would be so focused on their knitting that they would actually bring it into expensive representational portraits. So these are my reflections on that subject and uh, I look forward to any comments you might have when you've seen my small selection of knitting women. In the beginning of the 19th century, Denmark was in dire straits. In 1807, the British confiscated the fleet after a devastating bombardment of Copenhagen. In 1813, the state went bankrupt. And in 1814, Norway was lost to Sweden. Strangely enough, these events marked the beginning of a most prosperous era in the arts and also for the bourgeoisie. And today, uh, I wish to talk about what happened when the two met and how looking through the prism of one single motif might be a key to exploring emotional and ideological values in the period from around 1810 to 1840 in Danish art. The <coughs> bourgeoisie were a new important source of income for the artists in Copenhagen and thus influenced especially the development of portraits uh, in the first decades of the century. Many of the more elaborate portraits can be regarded as ideological images that illustrate the bourgeoisie and their culture of hard work and industry. They wanted to distance themselves from the nobility and their mentality. And this was a new thing. By the end of the, 19th, uh, the 18th century, uh, we see paintings like this, uh, showing the Ruberg family, who were new rich merchants, they are out in the countryside and acting like nobles, showing their estate and underscoring family and succession. This is father and son. While this was actually a newly acquired estate, bought from the money of the hard-working Rupers. But this cannot be seen from the composition where having leisure time and the idea of owning land are key factors to the characterization of the family. Not so 20 years later, when the dominant class was no longer um, the nobility, but the bourgeoisie, um, who wanted to point out their own virtues by underscoring their diligence, as you can see with the two portraits of Mr. and Mrs. Smith. Um, he was an East Indian merchant, so rich that he actually lent money to the Danish state when it really needed it in 1808. And of course, we see him in his office by the desk, busy writing letters with his faithful dog at his feet. Um, the office is quite simple with uh, only one luxury detail, uh, which is the floor <laughs> with what is possibly a forerunner for linoleum, which was very expensive. Um, and now to his wife, um, who inspired this whole talk. She sits in a marvellous interior in their richly furnished apartment in the centre of Copenhagen. She's clad in the most luscious black silk available and has left her costly cashmere shawl casually on the birchwood sofa. From the gloves uh, on the table and her elegant attire with the fashionable ostrich feathers, uh, we understand that she's on her way out. She seems to be waiting either for her busy husband or maybe for the carriage to be readied. And why not work on her knitting while she waits? 
this is a woman who would probably subscribe to the saying that idleness is the root of all evil. So this is an example of how the Dan a famous example in Denmark at least of how the Danish bourgeoisie in the first part of the 19th century wanted to signal diligence. Mrs. Smith does not need to knit her own stockings, she could just buy them. But this family hadn't inherited their fortune, they had worked for it and they continued to work even though they were rich enough to lend the state money. So my proposition is that the knitting serves as a symbol for all that. And I got curious and began looking for this motif and found it in many um, of the paintings of the time. Here we see um, the royal physician, Christian Finger, with his wife and daughter. And also he has a faithful dog, as you see. Um, the wife is knitting. I hope you can see it. It's a bit too light in here. Um, while the daughter is more interested in the print that the father is holding. And this is even more of a snapshot shot of everyday life than Mr. and Mrs. Smith's portraits. Uh, we'll return to the parrot who has a friend in another painting that <laughs> I'll talk more extensively about. <coughs> then we have Emilio Spernsen. Uh, this is his family, uh, where the women not only knit, but also spin and sew. And um, here is one who even knits on the go, standing up. <laughs> um, here we see the artist's sister taking a break from her knitting. Uh, it's a half-length portrait that gets a small narrative out of having the knitting included. Without it, it would just be another head. And we have plenty of those in Danish art history as well. And finally, we have the Bo Peterson family. Um, the mother in the painting is actually the daughter of Mr. and Mrs. Smith. Uh, and you see copies, I don't know if you can see it, but there are copies of um, their heads from the portraits you saw just a moment ago. Um, Mrs. Vo Peterson is resting her knitting while looking at her youngest child, uh, who, by the way, is nursed by a woman from the countryside who wears her national costume. This is also the age of rising national romanticism. Um, as you can see, there's a decis decisive movement from the Smiths of 1818 to their daughter of 1836, a movement towards playfulness and display of emotion. So, what is at stake here? Well, Danish Biedermeyer painting, or Golden Age painting, as it's usually called in Denmark, is all about realism. That is really a key word. So, of course, the women are knitting in the portrait simply because they were. Um, as you can see from this sketch showing a group of women, and everyone is at their needlework or knitting. And this... It's a spontaneous sketch, so it's a good source of information um, of everyday life in a wealthy family. And uh, of course we also see images of people who actually needed those stockings, uh, mostly in genre paintings, but also in portraits. Um, here is something in between. This is um, painted by Kupke, who was the son of a baker. And here we see his sister knitting, also standing, <laughs> in uh, what I think is one of the most delightful works of Danish Golden Age painting. Um, she must have been at, at her handwork at all times. She's, she's out there working, walking <laughs> at the same time. Um, and here is a portrait of Kupke's mother, who's not knitting, but she uh, has been given the attribute of a ball of wool. And when you know that she had 11 children, you understand why she herself would need to knit and why she would ask her daughters to do the same. And then, of course, there are those um, that knitted for a living. This is slightly later, but it still gives you an impression. This is a portrait of a shepherd who adds to his living by knitting stockings and selling them. So this also tells us, tells us that you could actually buy stockings, you didn't have to, to knit them yourself. So what about rich people? Why would they be seen knitting and simple things like stockings? 
apart from showing that they respect and honor their past, like Mrs. Smith. Here you see uh, the Nathanson family. The, uh, the painting shows Mendel Levin Nathanson and his wife returning at night to their eight children after having been received at court for the first time. Uh, Mendel Nathanson was a wealthy merchant. He was a Jew of very humble origins and he had worked his way up and this painting marks his success um, having been received at court. It's painted by C.W. Eckersberg, who also painted the Smiths, and um, he had just been appointed professor at the Royal uh, Academy of Arts in Copenhagen and was one of the most sought after portrait painters of the period. And uh, Nathanson was one of his most keen supporters and had been placing orders with Eckersberg already when he was out on his grand tour in Europe uh, studying. So you look at this painting and there is no one knitting, but there is in this painting. Uh, this is a double portrait of the sisters Hannah and Bella Nathanson, who were the daughters of Mendel Levin Nathanson. C.W. Eckersberg has portrayed them in his easily recognizable Davidian style that he had learned in Paris, and it includes references to the classical in the girls' poses. One girl in strict profile, the other full face. Um, they look like a colored version of a marble group by the neoclassicist Torvaldsen, whom Eggersberg admired very much. And then, of course, the elephant in the room, or the parrot in its cage, which is, of, of course, a luxurious thing to own. But uh, I think it also tells us that more than realism is at work. Uh, because these girls are, of course, at the threshold of adulthood and should become good wives to some fine men in a short number of years. The parrot is traditionally linked with good breeding and it learns easily. And apparently so do these girls. Um, and what is Bella in her fine apricot dress doing? Well, she's knitting. So why not assume that knitting was part of a well-bred girl's education and skills, and that knitting was so central that you would want it in a portrait? In the first Danish Education Act of 1814, it specifically outlined what sort of handwork female pupils should be taught, among them knitting. So it must have been a matter of course that women knew their handwork, and yet, Eckersberg and also the father, Mr. Nathanson, wanted to include this and not um, some more academic references like books, writing and music, uh, as we saw in the family portrait where one of the daughters is at the piano. Um, we see something similar in this peculiar painting. Um, the young Mr. Raffenberg is showing his fiancée what is presumably a portrait of his late father. The old Mrs. Raffenberg is touched by the gesture, remembering a long and good marriage, while the young Miss Herop, the future Miss Raffenberg, is resting her otherwise knitting hands in her lap. So she too is an accomplished and hard-working young lady who will be a good wife. Um, and with this painting, uh, emotional aspects is also introduced. This is a painting about marital love, and the stocking is, well, for someone. Um, besides from signaling that Miss Heyerhoff is an accomplished young woman, the painter, uh, in this way, also deals her a token of love, a stocking that promises that she will be knitting for her husband once they are married. And maybe, if we stretch out a leg, you could say that the knitting is a symbol of the joint, strongly knitted future of the young couple. Um, as an aside, I can tell you that they indeed were to have a very long life together, uh, celebrating almost 46 years of marriage when he died in 1881. Now, I began by showing you uh, a painting of the Rueberg family. Um, and I talked about how they wanted to link themselves to the nobility's way of life. 
Um, as we get even closer to the turn of the century, we also see the reverse happening, that the nobility is inspired by the bourgeois way of life and ideologies. Uh, it's very hard to see, but she has her knitting here. Um, in this painting, which is also by Jens Schul, who painted the, the Rübergs, um, we see the lady Elisabeth Brun de Nergo with her eldest son. Of course, this painting has strong connections to the 18th century and the nobility's way of life, and it also connects strongly with Rousseau's thoughts about the bringing up children. But Lady de Nerco is also knitting at a stocking, and I think this adds to the, the everyday atmosphere of the painting that links her with a more bourgeois way of life. And the knitting subtly adds to the already intertwined nature of the composition of the mother and son's poses. Love is such an obvious element in this painting, and perhaps the, also the stocking is a symbol of that. In a book about housekeeping from 100 years later, uh, 1903, I found a story about an old lady, quote, An old lady was busy working on a scarf for her grandson, who was going to see. And every guest who came to her house was asked to knit a row while thinking kind thoughts about her boy, who was soon to leave on his long journeys. That scarf has probably warmed the young sailor in more than one way." End quote. I think this sums up the essence of knitting for someone. It's a labor of love. Or as David Gauntlet puts it in his book, Making is Connecting from 2011, quote, making is connecting because acts of creativity usually involve, at some point, a social dimension and connects us with other people, end quote. I've always wondered at the coolness of the portraits of the Danish Golden Age, at least in the beginning of the period. Um, the sitters would be listening to Schubert's songs and reading Lord Byron or something similar. Uh, this is the age of the romantics and big emotion, and yet they express very little emotion to the point of being poker faced. Of course, this is also the age of neoclassicism but it always had me wondering that these bourgeois paintings should be closer to neoclassicism than to romanticism. And maybe, that's my point, emotion is really there. Uh, after all, in some odd Biedermeier neutral way, maybe it can be found in a piece of knitting.